Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today is day 10 of our 30 day SQL challenge where we're gonna talk about how we can update existing tables using SQL. So our agenda for today, so there's multiple statements that we are going to learn. There is the update statement where we're able to update individual values within the table. There is a delete from statement where we're able to delete certain rows. There's an alter table statement where we're able to change the structure of our tables. There's a drop table statement where we can drop tables from a database. And then we're gonna hop into SQLite and practice. So if you're new to the 30 day SQL challenge, welcome. The whole goal of this challenge is to work for 30 days, preferably straight. I know consistency is something we all can work on, including me, but the goal is to do it 30 days straight if possible, to learn beginner to intermediate SQL skills that you can apply to projects and thus land an entry level data role. I have two QR codes on the screen and the links for both will be in the description below. There is a topic list that has all the topics for the 30 days, as well as supplemental resources. You should check it out. And there is a Facebook support group where we have a community chat where you can ask questions about the videos, ask questions about your code, find a study buddy and more. I highly encourage you to utilize the support group for support. Please, when you are troubleshooting, try to Google your answers and look at documentation. That is a great skill to have because when you're in the industry, you can't keep asking your boss, why am I getting this error? Why am I getting this error? They are going to look at you as a subject matter expert and empower you to look at other resources to try to troubleshoot. However, we're not in the industry yet, so feel free to still go to the chat, ask questions, tell us what you've tried in troubleshooting, and we will be there to help. So let's get with these statements. So in a previous video, I told you the difference between statements and clauses. And thus far, we have been focused on the select statement which is a complete command. A clause within the select statement is like another option for the statement. So the select statement has the clauses of select, from, where, order by, limit, etc. Those are all clauses that make up the select statement. Now the update statement is going to have its options where we have the set keyword, where we're able to set a new value to an existing column in this where clause where we can update based off of a certain condition. So let's look at an example. So in day seven, we created a table called Pixar Films. It was very fun. If you haven't looked at day seven, please, please, please look at it. But I am going to link this table in the description below. But in this case, we are updating the movie title. So we want to set the film title to be Finding Nemo Special Edition where the film title equals Finding Nemo. So if Finding Nemo exists in our table more than once, it is going to update to be this value every single time, okay? So this is the update statement. We can also update multiple columns at once. So once again, we are updating the Pixar Films table and there are multiple columns that I want to update. So I want to update the film title to be A Bug's Life. Notice that I put A Bug's Life in double quotes because the word itself has an apostrophe. And if I use it with just single quotes, it's going to throw an error unless I use an escape character. We're not going to talk about escape characters using SQLite. Just remember that if you're having an apostrophe that exists in the text, you want to surround it with double quotes. I'm also able to update the tomato score to be 92, where film ID equals one. And since film ID is our primary key, this should only update one row. Delete. So our delete from syntax is not going to have that set clause anymore. We're deleting from a specific table based off of a condition. So let's look at an example. We want to delete from Pixar films where the film title is inside out. So if there is more than one row that has the film title inside out, it's going to delete every single instance of inside out. 
Then we have our alter table statement. And this is normally to modify the structure of tables. So it helps us add new columns, drop columns, and rename columns. Alter table function looks a little bit different in SQLite than it does other SQL languages. So I highly encourage you to look at the documentation, which I'm going to show at the end of the video. And some of you are like, hey, I can rename columns using the select statement. You taught me the alias. But when you're using aliases in a select query, it is not actually adding that alias to the table itself. It's just a temporary name for your queries. If you actually want to change the table on the back end, you need to use the alter table statement. So in this case, this is the alter table statement that's adding a new column. So I want to alter the Pixar films and add the column runtime minutes and it's going to be an integer. So I can actually add that data type right after that new column that I'm creating as well as any constraints for that new column. Renaming and dropping columns. So I can rename the column by using rename column from this column to the new column that I want to rename. And this is going to rename the column on the back end. Say for instance, you know that there has been a change in the files that you are going to receive where your customer is going to start sending you files with, the, with a different column name. You could do a rename column on the back end. And then you can also drop a column, but use this with caution, okay? When dropping anything, whether it's columns or tables, make sure that you measure three times, cut once, make sure your boss is on board, everybody uh, that are is using the database across departments, understand that you're dropping a column or table, make sure that this is actually something you want to do. And I can also use the drop table statement to drop a table completely from a database. So if the table is no longer used and I don't need to put it in an archive or in an iceberg, I can drop that table from a database because the more data we have, the more data storage we need and data storage costs money. So some things to think about. So let's hop into SQLite Studio and I am going to go to my apps, find my nice little SQLite studio. Okay, so in this case, if you don't have your Pixar film code saved that we created in day seven, fear not, I'm going to add this code where we actually create the table in the description below. I'm just going to view everything that's in this table and it looks like it has some updates. So I'm going to actually uncomment this. Okay, so I'm going to create a new table and I'm going to call this Pixar Films 2. <clears throat> For demonstration purposes. <clears throat> and I'm going to say Pixar Films 2 here. All right. And I'm going to delete this out. Cool beans. So we're creating a table called Pixar Films 2 with a film ID, film title, release year, director, tomato score. And feel free to play around with this and create your own tables. The film ID is an integer, a primary key, and an auto increments. So you can go back and kind of look at previous videos to discuss how we made this table. So I'm going to create this table and then add three movies to the table, Toy Story, Finding Nemo, and Inside Out using my insert into. So I'm gonna run this. And now with my selects, I'm gonna do select everything from Pixar Films 2, just to see what's in there. And here I have it. I have those three values that I inserted inside my table. So now we actually want to update the Pixar Films 2 with the title A Bug's Life in a tomato score of 92, where the film ID is one. So that I actually know what my columns are named, I can expand it on the left-hand side to see all my column names so I spell things correctly. Or I can see it in the output here when I did my select everything or select star. Keep in mind in previous videos, we don't select everything in the industry. Sometimes these tables are very, very big. So you don't wanna put select star. You actually want to add a limit clause where you only return the top five, the top 10, the top 100 rows. So keep that in mind. And we'll talk about the limit clause in future videos.
So let's do update. It just has one keyword, which is update. And we want to update Pixar films too. And if you want to try this on your own, feel free to pause the video. And now with updates, we have that set statement. So I want to set the title, which is Storms in Film Title, equal to A Bug's Life. Put this in double quotes because bugs has an apostrophe. Comma, I wanna also update the tomato score. Tomato score, such a hard thing to spell to me. For 92. And I wanna do this update where the film ID, and we learned about the where clause equals one. I happen to know that the person who directed Toy Story is the same person who directed A Bug's Life. So that's why I'm not updating the director. So let's go ahead and let's actually run this. And now I'm going to do the select so I can see if the changes actually took effect. So I'm going to rerun the select star. And I see that it has. Film ID now has A Bug's Life and a tomato score of 92. I happen to also know that A Bug's Life was released in 1998, not 1995. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here. So it's just as simple as adding a change. So I'm going to do release underscore year equals 1998 after I put a comma and I'm going to run this and then I'm going to select to see if that came in effect. And it did, 1998, awesome. So now I want to delete the row that has the title inside out. And there's only one film that has this title, so I'm only deleting one row. Like I wouldn't delete a state abbreviation that's NY because maybe there's a lot of people who have the state NY. Or maybe you do because you're not interested in NY. So just keep that in mind when you're deleting things to use caution. So this is going to use two words, delete from. The table that we want to delete from, Pixar Films 2, No semicolon there. And then here I'm gonna do a condition where film title equals inside out. Now this, I could have used single or double quotes because there is no apostrophe in between the um, quotations. So now I'm gonna go back, run the select statement again to see if it works and it has deleted out. I have two rows instead of three, awesome. So now I can use an alter table to actually add a column. So I want to add runtime to this table. And so two words again, alter table, Pixar Films 2. And we want to use this keyword add column. And I want to add a column called runtime. And this is going to be an integer. I'm going to go ahead and assign it as data type as well. I'm going to run this. Go back up. Run my select statement to see if it works. And it did. Right now it's null. So how can I get the runtime filled in? Well, I can do another insert into that just has runtime and insert the appropriate runtimes that I need. So those are our three main statements. I'm not going to do the drop table, but you could actually do drop table Pixar films too if you wanted to actually drop this table. So for your homework, you wanna use alter table to rename the column release year to year so that it's actually on the back end of the database. You can update the tomato score for finding Nemo to be 100. And you can also do any other practice that you want to do. So try things out. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get an error and you learn by your errors just as much as you do from successes. So real quick, I'm going to briefly talk about documentation, if I can bring it up. And so let's go ahead to the end of this presentation. And I'm going to actually open up another screen that's called SQLite, and I'm going to say alter table documentation. So that was the one that I said is kind of different. And I'm going to go right to SQLite.org. They have a whole documentation section. But see here how they say the keyword is alter table, 
And then whatever table name you want to alter, you also can alter a schema. And so these are your key clauses. You can rename two, you can rename column, you can add a column like we just did, or you can drop a column. And sometimes when you scroll down, they give you examples as well, okay? But for this one, it gives you an alert. It says the compatibility of alter table is actually a little buggy in certain versions of SQLite, okay? So it's telling you which versions will actually let you do things. But it says for the most part, you can rename a column, okay? You can drop a column and you can make other changes such as add column as well, okay? So this is how sometimes the documentation look that takes some getting used to, but we're gonna look more and more into documentation as we go into the days because everyone is coming out with new documentation. You need the skill to be able to read documentation. So with that being said, thank you all so, so, so much. Please hit the notification bell. Please help me out by hitting a like on the video. Please comment on the video. I'm going to have a link to my Etsy shop where I have nerd and SQL merch, so get your teas, as well as if you want to buy me a $5 coffee to support the channel to help me continue to make free content for you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.